I feel very privileged to be with Paul Gurney, who is right in the middle of training for not one extraordinary race, but two. During his day job, Paul's a senior manager at Accenture. He's also a fellow of the International Centre for Corporate Social Responsibility. He runs one of the largest employee-led charity initiatives in the world, which has raised over $4 million for uh, voluntary services overseas. But he's currently training, as I said, to become one of only three people in history to have completed two of possibly toughest races on earth. The Marathon des Sables, which is a 210k ultra marathon, multi-day in the Sahara. And the second race, which he's currently training for, is um, a race to the magnetic North Pole, 620 kilometers, with a very real possibility of having to deal with minus 50 degrees C um, during the day and night, I presume, and a very real possibility of polar bears. So, obviously that spirit of adventure is something that you've, you've always had, but what, what was the spark, what was the catalyst that made you think, I'm going to race to the North Pole? I think it's been a few things really. I think over the past few years I have done a number of different challenges and running the charity has really given me the opportunity to get a lot more people involved in doing these sorts of things. So, I think for me a key focus was how can I take this to the next level? That's both for me personally, but also in terms of doing a lot more for the charity. So I think when I looked at the opportunities to do something genuinely unique, um, you know, the idea of this fire and ice challenge was born, you know, going from uh, minus 50 to one of the most extreme parts of the world at the North Pole, through to plus 50 at the Marathon de Salva. So two hugely different challenges, but, but really challenges that I think will inspire people to get involved with the charity. Um, and really do things for themselves that will push their own boundaries and push their own limits in the same way I'm trying to do for that for myself as well. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing for me is people getting the opportunity to see what they themselves are capable of. Mm -hmm. And no matter what that is, whether that's a, a 10K in your local park or going to the North Pole, it's about challenging yourself and doing things genuinely at, at the limit mm -hmm. and really not having the confidence that you're necessarily going to achieve and succeed your, your goals. And I think for me, you know, over the years, I still not found that point at which it stops and it all goes horribly wrong. I will find that point. It won't, I'm hoping it's not going to be in the middle of the Arctic, um, you know, facing a polar bear or, you know, 3,000 feet at the bottom of the ocean. But I, don't, you know, I genuinely believe that if you prepare for these things and you prepare for them well, you c you can do them. Whether that be, you know, and I've done it in training, running 100 kilometres in one go. Um, you know, mentally you go through so many different emotions and so many different physical challenges um, and that's going to be the same on both of, the, both of these races. Um, you know, another key thing is just the ability to manage yourself and be efficient with what you're doing, so looking after yourself in hostile environments, whether that's as simple as cooking food in the middle of the Arctic with polar bears around, um, simply managing your gear in the middle of an Arctic storm or whether that's in the middle of a desert, um, you know, carrying all your kit for the next seven days that you're trying to pack into a smaller space as possible. Um, you know, they, they both have huge challenges. I think from a fitness point of view, overall fitness, obviously critical to both of them. I'm going to be very different physically for the North Pole. That's what I was thinking. I need to be probably 20 kilograms heavier than I am when I do the Marathon de Sable. So actually one of my big challenges now, I've done a lot of the fitness training, is to put on another 10 or 15 kilos, mm. simply just body fat and actually give me the energy stores that I can survive for six weeks in the Arctic, you know, using eight to 10,000 calories, whereas I'm only eating five. Mm. Um, you know, so, so there's definitely elements that are the same, yeah. um, but, but certainly they are quite literally opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of the environment I'm facing. Mm -hmm. So uh, as soon as I come back from the pole, I'm literally switching straight into to running uh, mode. I'll be you know, starting to get back on doing ultra marathons and a lot of long distance training. So whereas now I'm spending a lot of time in the gym and, and technically preparing in terms of you know, learning how to use my kit and figuring out, you know, best it's ways to... It's a lot of kit. It's a huge amount of kit. Carry. I'm carrying probably and about... Are you carrying it or dragging it's, it? It's what, what's the... Yeah, it's all dragged on a sled, actually. So I've got a... Um, you, have a you have a harness that, that 
you're basically attached to the whole time. And clipped behind you is, is a sled, and that's probably going to have, we've not weighed them yet, but probably around 120, 130 kilos. So you drag that behind you, and, and the best way it's described to me is, um, so if you go into your bathroom, rip out your bath, um, take put, it for a walk. Put, put two of your heaviest mates in there, take it down to the beach, drag it up and down for six weeks. Um, so it's physically, awesome. it's great, what a challenge. I mean, what more well, could you want? Challenge. What more could you want? So, uh, so that's a little different, obviously the running, I'm trying to do completely the opposite. Um, so instead of 130 kilos, I'm trying to carry as little as I can possibly manage, um, uh, which aiming for about six or seven kilos of kit, and that's all, for, for seven days of running in the desert. Plus, obviously, the water you get given. Yeah. Um, but that includes food, that includes sleeping bag. And so the only thing it's not included is water? Yeah. Yeah, so that's food for seven days, um, sleeping bag, venom kit, flares, um, you know, emergency medical kit, yeah. all of those things compared with 130 kilos of, you know, I've got rations for 35 days at the pole, um, you know, all the kit that comes with you. And surprisingly, very little of that is actually clothing. You know, yeah. you only change your clothes probably... Well, your, your base layers maybe two or three times in that six weeks. So have you got a very different group of people that are, I suppose, supporting you, if you like, your support network around being in, initially, mm. that extreme icy, you know, the wind chill, the polar bears, the, you know, the ocean and everything yeah, yeah. that goes with that? Is it so people that have done it before? Yeah, it's an, it's an amazing group of people. So the guy who, who set up this race, the polar race, uh, Phenomenal character, huge, huge amount of um, respect from the sort of adventure community in the sense that he, he's got a number of world records to his name and polar firsts. So one of the most experienced people in the Arctic you'll, you'll ever meet. It's also our, our support crew. We've got two, two genuine world experts who are famous mountaineers and explorers in their own right who, who are supporting us. So they'll be in the background making sure that, you know, there's an element of safety to this and that we... Um, we're not, you know, causing ourselves too much, uh, you know, not getting into too much trouble. Um, so over the two-year process to get trained for the North Pole, these guys have been helping us and supporting us and making sure that we're learning and progressing in the right way. So hopefully with a team like that behind you, we've got a good chance of succeeding. And so if they push you to do, I don't know, but I'm, I'm presuming it might be the sort of challenge that you don't quite know what you're up against until you're up against it sort of thing but are there other mm. challenges that are you know, equally challenging and tough that actually can help you acclimatise if you will to the sort of thing you're headed for? Yeah definitely I mean uh, acclimatising for the physical side of things and just the environment is very hard I mean mm -hmm. the only solution is to go to northern Scandinavia in the middle of winter um, you know you, you can get the sort of minus 30 temperatures up there but it's not. It's difficult to simulate walking for that period of time with a, a harness. It's, uh, some of it will be. I'll be doing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. but with any things like this, you want to try and do to simulate as much as you possibly can before you go out there. Mm -hmm. So that that ability to walk will be a lot of time spent on beaches, carrying tyres behind me and walking with poles and things like that. Um, the temperatures are really hard one because we, you know, as cold as it gets in the UK, it's not minus fifty. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, spending some time in you know, cold facilities, and we've got a couple around the yeah, UK. It's the wind chill, presumably, that's, that's yeah, that's be so much worse than. Being yeah, cold. that's that's really the the difficult part because if it is windy, it's a bizarre one, but it's actually not the temperature necessarily. It's sometimes the just the noise and the challenge of it, and especially if it's blowing up a lot of dust and, and, and wind. Sorry, and a lot of snow. You can't even see the people you're you're with, and that environment becomes a little bit tricky. Everything mm -hmm. becomes more difficult. Even just talking to each other in really high wind becomes quite difficult. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff we'll just have to learn when we're out there. Um, so I suppose part of the challenge, which is quite interesting, is that you know, despite the um, extreme nature of the training, because it's just an extreme challenge, a lot of that piece you'll find out sort of in the moment, which is mm. actually about communication with other people, you know, and how you think and how you, you work together, mm. which in itself, I'm... You know, is that something that you're doing before or, or are you doing challenges together? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, f for the polar trip, you know, it, it really is a team effort. In fact, it doesn't matter how fit I am um, or how able I am to do certain things, I'm totally reliant and dependent upon and supportive of my team members. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, absolutely, we're, we're going to be spending a lot of time together. And some of that is actually just totally removed from doing anything at the polar. It's actually we can get to know someone on a 
a really basic level, because we get in trouble out there, or even just spending six weeks with very little communication with anybody else at all for that period of time, it's going to be one of the most important things, actually, just knowing how to deal with each other. Getting through any sort of nonsense around egos or anything like that, it doesn't matter. You've just got to work well together as a team, no matter what else. What keeps you going? What keeps that spirit going, if you will, on those days when it's difficult, when it's hard, when it's too hot, when it's too cold, when there might be a polar bear on the horizon? What keeps you going through those days when it's tough? You always have your days when things don't go to plan. Mm. And you've, you know, it's a, it's a long run, you've got a time in your head and you know what, you're not achieving it because you feel terrible or the weather's much worse or it's colder or it's hotter or you know, you run out of water on a 80k run and you had to go to Asda, which has happened many a time. You just run out of, run out of provisions. And it gets frustrating. Um, you do have times when you just look at yourself and it's, you know, four o'clock in the morning and you're still running and you're just thinking, what am I doing with my life? This is, something's gone wrong. Um, but actually, it's, it's very easy to kind of get yourself out of that mode sometimes um, because, you know, on the flip side, you have all these situations where you're a bit frustrated, but the times when things are going well and you're happy and you still realise the big picture of what you're trying to do, and ultimately for me, the charity side, the impact it's having, mm. that's really what it's all about. So actually, you know what, even if I don't get the best time on something or it's not going quite to plan, as long as I still achieve what I'm trying to do, actually, that's fine. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And, and is, that, is that what you do in those moments when it's yeah, really you've, difficult? <laughs> yeah, when it's really difficult, you just got to, it's, it's solely mental strength. I mean, your body will endure more than you could possibly imagine. Um, you know, I've been in you know, that 100 kilometer run I was talking about. The pain you go through is almost indescribable. Um, it's impossibly difficult. You know, you've been running for eight, nine hours. Um, it's, you know, midnight, there's no one else around, you're still running, and you know you're in a race as well. Um, you just got to say to yourself, you know, just keep going and just mentally keep pushing yourself and you know what you'll keep running and you'll be amazed that you will just keep on going um, and it's purely mental strength I'm not I'm not the fittest guy or the fastest guy I'm probably the most stubborn guy you'll, you'll meet but <laughs> certainly from a, a fitness point of view there's nothing extraordinary about me at this stage it purely is mental ability just to keep on going right. some people they don't they don't want to do this stuff and I totally accept that you know this is in many ways a bit exceptional a bit different but, but actually, I genuinely believe if people are, have a goal in mind, then anyone can generally do it. And if you're passionate about it enough or you're committed enough to it, you, you can definitely do it. So you know, mentally for me, if I say, you know, I, I did one recently where I did a run. I said, I'm going to run for 24 hours. I'm going to get up and, I, and I, <laughs> I left my house at 11 in the morning and I ran for 24 hours and, or at least didn't stop moving for 24 hours. Um, and in my head, I just simply said, I'm just going to keep going for 24 hours and see what happens. Um, and you know, I was looking at my watch and I've been running for 21 hours and yeah, everything is hurting. It's, it's daylight again and you've run through the night and you know, but actually if you can just keep on going, you'll get there. And I, I generally think it's, there probably is something a little bit different about that, that, that says, okay, well, here's what I'm going to try and do. And I will push myself to as far as I possibly can do to see if it's possible. Um, but it, it is solely mental, mental strength to keep doing that. You know, it's, uh, it's difficult to do, but not impossible. And that's the, that's the key thing. You know, people, people will tell you, you can't run for 24 hours. Well, why not? Well, who, was, what's who, who, who established that rule? Yeah. Why, why can't you run for 24 hours? Why can't you run for 48 hours? You know, yes, of course, there is a limit at some stage, but it's about actually understanding what that is. Yeah. And if you know what it takes to be able to run for 24 hours or to get to the North Pole or to run the marathon de Sable, or even do a 5k in your local park. It doesn't really matter. It's about, it's about saying, okay, well, here, here's the five things I need to do to be able to achieve this, and then going after them quite systematically, working on it, and you'll do it. Mm. But you've got to stick to that plan. Yeah. A lot of people would be hugely inspired by what you do. I know also a lot of people would be terrified by the thought of what you're just about to embark on. But, but who, in, who, who inspires you? Who are those people there that you know, have inspired you to do this? It's a great question. Um, I, think, I think if I look back, uh, a lot of the things I've read over the years and people I've followed, I think there's some, there's some natural people that you would always say, you know, Sir Randall Fiennes, um, someone who I've, I've recently had the, the privilege of, of, of seeing. 
you know, people again who tried to do something that had just never been done, you know, a, you know, crossing uh, Antarctica from, from land, from one side of the continent to the other had never been done before. People said it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. And continuing, you know, even at his age now of 68, continuing to, to challenge what people perceive as impossible. Um, I think, uh, I think that's hugely, hugely inspiring. It's, it's not him per se, but it's that mentality of yeah. trying to do something, whatever field it is, whether that's um, sport or even politics or any form of leadership is, is, is really about trying to do things that people haven't done before. And, and, and that to me is really what inspires me personally. And I see that in all, all sorts of walks of life, people who were just resolutely focused on something, as long as it's something I agree with, yeah. um, or, or generally don't have any issues with. I think you know, that's, what, that's what really inspires me personally.